Baker, hi, welcome back to another So Together Tuesday. Hold on, we've got an echo. There we go. Let's try it again. Hi. My bad, guys. That was that's that would on me. be our monitor. We don't always, we usually turn it off, so we didn't do it today. Oops, sorry. Um, so welcome at So Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the national educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are back again for another week of a little sewing class. So in the uh, the preview here, you saw our little Lone Pine video. We had showed that last week in the middle of the class or at the end of class, I guess we did. And uh, so you just saw it again. Those fabrics are shipping now to stores and are gonna be available very soon. I know of a few stores who have told me that they are going to have them. So make sure that you look for them. You can um, find some stores on our website. You can find the closest stores that are closest to you. If you are part of our I Love Cuddle group, you can uh, find stores there. So a lot of times the stores will post when they have stuff. So that's part of our Facebook group and you're welcome to join that. There's also lots more information on our website. So you can go to, what is the website, Michael? Uh, there's a website that you can go to that you can get more information about all of the different fabrics, see the um, sort of like a behind the scenes doc with the filmmaker who is Jeremy. He's our videographer, not Hawk. So it's a different, different filmmaker, a videographer, and he did that little uh, movie for us. And so the movie will be out. It's released June 1st. And if you buy the fabric anywhere, you'll get a little postcard that gives you uh, exclusive access to watch that movie. So we're really excited about it. It's going to be a really fun, just a whole thing that we're doing. And we're excited to see it for real, too. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I'm looking forward to June 1st when I can watch it, too. So anyway, that's what's coming up. I want to remind you guys because that's happening. We're here today for a special Mother's Day project. Mother's Day is on Sunday, if you can believe it, because we're almost halfway into the year already, and I don't know how that happened, but here we are. It's May already. Mother's Day is on Sunday, and so we're doing sort of a little um, like Mother's Day spa gift set this week. So we're doing a project today, and hopefully gonna finish it, and if not, we're gonna finish it tomorrow, and then do slippers. So today is a towel wrap, and we're using a sew for home pattern. You can find more of their patterns at SoForHome.com, but you can find the link to this pattern specifically on our blog. So if you go visit the blog, you can, which should be in the, the, uh, the down below stuff, in the comments, but in the description. Uh, that's what I was looking for. So it should be in the description so that you can find the blog post. So make sure that you go there. The list of everything you need and the links for the pattern for today and for tomorrow are on that blog post. So make sure you check that out. Okay. Uh, all right. So make sure that you comment. We're going to be giving away. Oh, sorry, Michael. So <laughs> we're going to be giving away a uh, quilt kit. So make sure that you uh, comment and share it with your friends. So these are the things that we're going to need for today's project for the little towel wrap. We're going to need just a little bit. So just a quarter yard or less of cuddle three that we're going to use for the binding. So we don't often bind with uh, cuddle three, but we're going to show you how to do that today. You're also going to want about a yard, or one and three quarter yards terry cloth. The terry cloth we make, so Shannon Fam makes a few different kinds of terry cloth, and we make uh, just the regular terry cloth in 10 ounce, 16 ounce, and 19 ounces. So you can imagine that the 19 ounce is just about twice as thick and scrumptious as the 10 ounce. So 10 ounce is a really lightweight terry. So you can find different weights and they, uh, work differently. I'm going to be using a 16 ounce today. I love the, uh, the 16 and the 19 ounce. They're fabulous. So you're also going to want to have a ruler, 24 inch long ruler, rotary cutter and self healing mat. I'm using both of those from Ulfa today. Uh, you'll want a nice 9014 stretch machine needle. We'll talk about it in just a second, but I'm going to use a universal for a bunch of this. Uh, also fabric clips using the wonder clips from Clover and of course their flower head pins. I'll have micro serrated scissors from from more today and uh, I love the Kai ones too but my Fomores are right there we're using polyester thread from Metrocene or Mettler it's called Metrocene and I'll be using of course the stiletto and pressing tool from by Annie we'll also have a yard and a half of no roll elastic which is different than regular elastic so make sure you look for that no roll seven inch hook and loop tape otherwise known as velcro six inch ribbon a coordinating button if you want to for the pocket and a serger is also optional so those are all the things that we're going to need for today's project. Okay. I talked just a little bit about the needle before, while that the little video was playing, I was over here changing my needle and we were seeing if it was kind of a race to see if I could get it done in time because I looked it up. So we always use a 9014 stretch needle for cuddle, right? That's just what we do because it's a knit fabric. It works better. Miss, like you won't get skip stitches, all of that good stuff. So a 9014 stretch is really important for working with cuddle. 
but we're working with terry cloth today and so i was wondering like should i be using something else so i looked at this little book Let's see if i can hold it up for you guys it's the abc pocket guide from schmetz who are our favorite needle people okay so in this little book if i open up the book it's a nice little diagram that tells you all about so zoom in here tells you all about your needle what the different parts are how they're a little bit different from each other those little color codes on there are really important and there is a page if i can find it Let's see if it's back here it is that will tell you all of those color codes okay so if you have not figured out which like you don't know which needle you're using this is where you can find out because those little color codes on the needle will tell you Okay, the blue and yellow are the stretch needles. So in this little book too, at the bottom, it has like a whole different thing about like if you're sewing with a different kind of needle, let me find one, here we go. I wanna just show you the page I went to. So you can flip through all of these and here's all the different fabrics. So different fabrics that you're using down here at the bottom. So we have polyester, your poplin, you know, your quilting, rayon, da 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 da, terry cloth right over here, a universal. Okay, so that's what we're going to use today. So this little booklet is available at a lot of shops and you can uh, get this also. I think you can probably get it from Schmetz, but it has a lot of helpful information. So if you have this, keep it in your sewing room and access it sometimes um, for things like this when you're like, which needle do I use? So for today, for Terry Cloth, we're using a 8012 Universal. I kept my stretch needle right here, my uh, 9014 stretch, because we're going to need that for when we're doing the cuddle later. So I am still going to switch over. If I'm using cuddle for any part of the project that I'm sewing, like if I'm sewing two substrates together and one of them is cuddle, I will always use the stretch needle. Okay. So I always sort of defer to that if I'm sewing the two together. But we're going to be sewing some of it, just the terry cloth. So we're going to start with that. Um, all right. So the first thing I want to do, I'm probably going to have to switch the needle a couple times. So we'll do that. So these are the little slippers. Sorry, I was going to show you guys. These are the cute little slippers you want to make tomorrow. So make sure you come back tomorrow. Cute little guys. We're using the Dazzle. So Lux Cuddle High <laughs> Dazzle. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. There's some little sparklies on there. Okay. Super fun. So it's like the Sparkle Cuddle, but it is um, the Hide. So and then it has the little stuff on it. And then this is the little towel wrap that we're making. Okay, so you guys can see. So it's just like this. You would wear it cute. Get out of the shower. Have something to cover yourself up in. To run to your bathroom. Um, this pattern. So the pattern is. Um, the sizes are all in there. You can find all that information on the week. I think it was 33 by 51 inches is what you cut the terry at. And I found that it just barely overlapped over my mom hips. <laughs> so you might want to measure it and make sure that it will fit whoever you want to make it for. So what I found is that if you measure the size of your hips and add 14 inches, then you should get to a size that would work totally fine. So cut it that length. All right. So all of the measurements we're doing can be sort of jimmied a little bit. And we're going to do that because we're going to make a tiny version today. So today I'm going to make a quarter size, quarter size version. It's like a half size, 50%. Um, that's what I'm doing. So it'll be a little one so we can sew through everything. I also forgot we're doing a giveaway by Annie because we're going to use her soft and stable tomorrow. So I brought this to remind myself when she's going to be giving away um, a half yard of soft and stable and a stiletto to two lucky winners. Okay. So I think one today, one tomorrow, I think is how that goes. Uh, so we'll be using that for tomorrow's uh, project. We'll be using the soft and stable and it helps make those soles solid and really soft. So soft and stable, so it'll make those soles. Um, <laughs> we also have um, a cute little sleep mask that we did before. We did uh, this project, oh, sometime mid last year. I don't remember. And um, yeah, who knows no when idea. it happened? I don't either. <laughs> a while ago. A while ago. Um, super cute project though. And I made this to match. So it's a whole little set that has the towel wrap and the sleep mask and the slippers. la -dee -da. Okay. And we'll have a new pattern for you up on the website very soon. All right. So if you have any questions, please leave them. I did not switch it so I can see comments. Um, so leave, uh, leave your comments and Hawk will tell me. <laughs> what I need to answer and, uh, and get your, your questions answered too. So we're working with a different fabric that we normally do. Like I said, normally we're working with cuddle or Lux cuddle. And today we're working with terry cloth. So I need to cut this 17 inches tall. I cut it as wide as I wanted to. 
Yeah, because I cut it basically in half. So it was supposed to be 51 inches. I cut it at 25 inches. It's supposed to be 33 inches. I'm going to cut it about 17 inches um, just so I can have it at about the right place. Okay, so it's about a quarter size. Is that a half size? I don't know. Anyway, cutting it there. All right, and I'm going to get my big long ruler here so I can measure all the way across. And I'm going to measure along the 17 inches. So I wanted to make sure and cut this with you guys today because I wanted to show you how it cuts. Because people think that Cuddle has the corner on messy. But I'm just telling you, Terry Cloth has got it too. Got some mess. So not terrible. We can do it. But you're going to have some mess that comes off here. Okay. So make sure that you give it a good shake. So I'm gonna, because what the way that terry cloth is made is it actually has all these little loops on it and so when you cut it you cut all of those little loops so all of those little bits of um the loops are falling off okay so it's a different kind of fiber that's now off but um yeah it's there okay so we're just going to sweep that up throw it in the trash. Okay, so the little bit of extra, I'm going to use that for part of my other. So one of the things about this is when you're cutting the piece out, it's really important that the length of it, so the part that actually like wraps around you, the longer part, is actually on the selvage. So you want a selvage edge. We're going to use that to our benefit. Okay, so this selvage edge, we're going to use this. So make sure that you've cut that on your long side. We're going to use that when we do the elastic part, and that's important. So if you don't do that, you need to finish it for sure, because that's what that does is it saves you from having to finish the edges. On this one today, we're just going to, we're going to do it like they show in the pattern. I will say that on the other one that I did, I surged all of my edges and then didn't double turn. So a serger is really handy for this project too. Okay. You will have some extras. So depending on how you cut it, ours is wider. I can't remember how wide our terry cloth is right now. Might be close to 60 though, because I was able to get two widths out of it. Um, and it was supposed to be 33 inches. So my guess is it's around 60 inches. Because so I was like, close enough. So I did. And then you're going to have some extras. And I'm just going to use this later to cut up into some washcloths. And then I just surge the edges. Okay. Oh, but I did want to cut out the pocket out of this. All right. So we're going to prep that first. So I'm going to show you a kind of a weird technique. We've done it before on Sew Together Tuesday projects. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure that the nap is the direction that I want it to go. So we're going to do this thing where we trace where we want to sew it and we're going to sew it and then cut it. So in the pattern, she, you know, like normal patterns, will tell you to cut out the shape and then sew it together. And I'm going to tell you to sew it together and then cut out the shape because I find that it works much easier with um, two weird shapes going together. Not weird, but they're, you know, it's not a square. And then it also helps because you don't have to get the uh, curve perfectly as you're coming around. I find that trying to fight the curve as I'm coming around that oval is harder than I want it to be. So I'm going to put these on here and I'm going to stick some pins in so that it will stay in place. So I'm going to pin all the way around the shape. And I'm going to try not to move it too much. Because these are different substrates, they don't want to stick together. Like if you put two cuddles together or two Lux cuddles, sometimes they'll kind of hold each other. This one does not work that way. So I'm just trying to hold it in place. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trace all the way around this. So I have cut it out on my stitching line. And I'm going to trace around here on my stitching line. And then I'm going to come up here and mark these little, these are my little fold lines, obviously. All right, make sure, was my nap going the right way? Yes. All right, so at this point, we're just going to come around and sew already. Ready? All right. Okay. Let's so in it. the pattern, she says that you, this is totally a legit way of doing it, is that you would sew it, leave a two inch gap somewhere and turn it inside out through that gap. Because Cuddle is a knit and it's thick, 
we're going to do something else and we're just going to stitch all the way around this. So I'm just using a straight stitch at a 3.0 stitch length. Okay. And I'm just going to sew all the way around it. And I'm just going to double over where I started. I'm going to try to keep this as nice and flat as possible as I work my way around. Okay. So I've got both layers here. I'm just trying to follow the line. Just watching that line go in. Try to keep these as flat as possible and not let them move too much because they're too both a little bit fluffier, a little plush. They kind of want to do things on me. So I'm going to make sure as I come around this corner, I want to make sure and look ahead here and make sure I don't have anything building up this direction because then I would have a pucker here and I don't want that. Then I would have to like try to make it work. So I'm going to take it nice and slow. The faster you go, the more likely you are to push fabric. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clip the thread and then bring it on over here. My ruler there. Hold on. All right. So now I'm going to take my pins out. So you, got, got you guys got a little view of barefoot sewer in the house. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> barefoot sewer. That's me. Um, I don't like sewing with shoes on at all. So I have sewn all the way around, which doesn't make sense because now we're like, we're stuck with it. I'm going to trim the seam allowance and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So I'm just going to trim this off. So I find this a much easier way to sew around that circle. And it's really kind of my favorite thing for tackling curves with um, squirrelier fabrics. All right. I replaced my blade, uh, I don't know, a week ago or so. And then a couple days ago, I ran over a pin. And so it has a little, has a little hiccup in it. I need to replace it again, but it's always so sad when it's like, a new blade and then I ruin it <laughs> by something dumb like running over a pin. It's terrible. So many hiccups that's why. There is a whole tribe of barefoot sewers that, oh, yeah. you, that you may now be the leader of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are a crew, man. Barefoot. Yeah, it, I just have more control over my feet. <laughs> and I have to use them for the pedals. So I am going to use this so that I can flip it Here's my little mini pocket for my mini towel wrap we're making today. So this is the version of it, right? Is I want to flip it so it has terry cloth thing outside. This is going to come around to the inside. So I know that this side, I'm going to make a little hole. Okay, this is how we do Pat the Penguin's beak too. And so I'm just going, so they know this is my inside down near the bottom. So I'm just going to clip a hole. And I'm going to turn this. Oops, I need to do a little clipping here. And I'm going to clip these corners because I've got terry cloth. Okay, and the terry cloth will want to uh, kind of, I don't know, rumble up at those corners so that it will cause some weirdness. I'm going to clip some little V's. And then I think as much as I didn't want to bring out my vacuum cleaner, I'm going to have to. Okay. Go ahead and clip all of these. So this is, uh, this isn't so necessary for the cuddle. So like literally you could just cut the terry cloth if you wanted to, but it's easy enough to just clip both. Okay, and I'm going to do a bunch of those around this corner because it is an, kind of a big corner. And I want this bottom part to lay really nicely. So those clips will help this lay smoothly. So now I can take that little hole. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to shove this up and through that little hole. Okay. So it's just going to come right out there. 
And then I'm going to have a hole. Yes, I will still have a hole on the inside of my pocket, which I could then go ahead and uh, I could hand stitch that shut or I can just leave it because not a lot is going to go in that pocket. So depends on how you know perfect you want it to be or if you're making it for yourself or gift. <laughs> Those are two very different processes in my mind. I often cut corners for myself and I'm less likely to do so for other people. Okay, so this is the inside of my pocket. Like I said, you could, you could hand sew this shut, do a little whip stitch here. I'm not going to, but instead, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. Okay, so I can look at my, use my pattern. Do a pin here and do a pin here so I can fold it correctly. And then just fold this over. And there is our pocket. So with this one, I took and I did some hand stitches. I'm gonna do that, I think, again. So I just did some little hand stitches here to hold it to the front. So I'm gonna do that on this one, make sure that these are all nice and rounded out. You could also do a little uh, button right here. So if you had a really cute little button, this would be really fun if you had uh, embroidery and you wanted to do a little monogram of your mom's initials right there. You do all sorts of stuff to kind of make this into something a little extra special. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this. I'm going to just do a couple little stitches because I just want to hold it tacked down is what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to go through here and I'm going to grab just the terry and bring it back. Do the same. And I'm actually going to have a teeny tiny little thread there. Oh, no, I have to put the reading glasses on. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I can't see again. I'm just going to tie a knot. This is what happens when you run out of thread. Just do the teeny tiny little knot down here. There we go. Pink. All right. All good. Now we'll hold it in place. That'll keep my flap down. Okay, so now I flap is no longer going to pop up, and I've got it ready to stick onto my towel wrap when we get there. Okay, so I've also prepared, so I've got my little bitty pocket for the one I'm using. And then I've got, so this is, this is a real size pocket. I wanted to show you how to do a real size pocket. Uh, so this is what you would stick onto it. Put that aside here, and then I've got my binding strips as well. Okay. I'm just going to put this aside and I'm going to go ahead and vacuum really fast because this is a lot of, a lot of terry cloth mess. Terry dust? Is that what we call it? Does it have a name? <laughs> okay. You want to talk about that? Do I want to talk we, about that? We haven't seen that in a minute. It's probably true. <laughs> This is the, um, you know, the well-used and loved little Black & Decker vacuum that I use. You can find it online. It runs around $60, and it's really great. The reason I like it is because the air comes out the back. So this is, this is if you're dealing with cuddle, this is a really important aspect, is because the air, when you blow it, comes out this direction and not out to the sides like most uh, dustbuster sort of handheld backs. They'll blow out to the side and blow your cuddle dust everywhere. This one blows out the back, so it's super easy. I have had the one I have downstairs, I've had for probably close to five years now, and it works really, really well. So definitely worth, um, worth investing in a little vacuum that you can use to clean up your mess. Okay, so now we have our pocket done. We have our little binding ready, and then I cut my piece that is going to be my mini towel wrap. Okay, so this is, this is the size we're doing, which will fit perfectly with this little big pocket. See, it's perfect. <laughs> so we're just gonna do this tiny little towel wrap. But that way I could show you all of the steps that we need to do without it being too big, okay? So if I can remember right, let me check. Okay, so we need to measure in from each side. I need to measure in. So I'm gonna be doing some different measurements because I'm doing it small. Um, so you're gonna measure in seven inches and I'm going to measure in half that. 
okay, from either side. And I can show you uh, all of this on the big one later too. This is on the selvage side, okay? That's really, that's really important. So we're gonna go ahead and this is going to be where my elastic is. So these parts will be where the Velcro is to keep it closed. This is where we're doing the elastic. So what we're doing now is finding the placement for the elastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half. And I'm gonna put a pin in here. And then I'm gonna fold these in half so that I can get those quarter marks. All right, and to me, it's way easier than trying to measure and make sure that everything is perfectly matched because sometimes I don't measure things correctly. So if I just fold in half, it's close enough and I am real happy with that. Okay, so was there a question? Yeah, we I think, I think maybe it's gonna be bear size. Oh. Oh, totally. But, Somebody but said I'm it, thinking it might be Ellie sized. It might be Ellie sized. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody suggested, I think it was Jackie suggested that I needed an American Girl doll to make all of these little things for it. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Do they have one with little braids? Because that's the one I want. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, could be, could be teddy bear size. So I've got my pins marked. So I've got the ends of where I want the elastic, the center, and then the center of those. All right. So then I take my little piece of ribbon. I think it called for six inches and I'm going to cut about three. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this on either side. If I remember this correctly. Let's see. I may just remember it wrong. This happens sometimes. I have to look at what I did before. Yeah. So that's how it looked before. Yeah, this is how it looks now. It's just tiny. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that over here. I'm gonna have a tiny little hook for it. So I'm gonna put my ribbon in here and then I'm just gonna stitch these down. So you can hold out there, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can watch from that side. Oops, my foot was loose. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a zigzag on this just so it's uh, a little bit faster and I feel like it holds it a little flatter. Um, I put, have to put my uh, center pin back in because I had to take it off so that I wouldn't sew over it. So I'm gonna come back over here, fold these in half so I can refine my center my ribbon is centered. I'm gonna put a pin back in it. All right. Okay. So now I've got my little hook. So this is totally optional. You don't have to do it, but it's a cute way to like hang it up on the shower door, or the bathroom door if you want to. Okay. Right. So we've got all of those done. We've got the little ribbon in, and now we're gonna mark it for where we're gonna fold it. So you can do this before or after you do your elastic. I want to do it before because for me it's a little bit easier and I had a harder time measuring once it was elasticized. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my little ruler. So this you would mark three inches up from the selvage edge. Okay, so this is where you're gonna do it. You're gonna mark it three inches up because I'm doing miniature size. Why not? Okay, so pretend that that's three inches up. I'm using a water soluble marker. And because uh, this will get wet and it will wash off. And I found that that works pretty darn well. This is just one from, you guessed it, Clover. <laughs> I might use a lot of their products. I like their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the, uh, the measurement marked on here for where I want that three inches. So that, that measurement is just going to hold on for a second. I'm not going to do anything with it right now. Instead, I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to get my elastic. So what you want to do is get this stuff. So this is, sorry, this is the uh, non-woven elastic, no, no roll, non-roll, okay? That's what you wanna get. So this stuff works really well. It won't roll up in your, the pocket. So this is, uh, I don't, yeah, this is not a no roll because what happens here is it'll go this way. So if you've done uh, elastic in casings and things and then your elastic rolls, it will totally do that. This will not do it. So look for this kind that'll say it's not roll. Okay. I just needed one inch, so we're using what I got. Now I have to remember. Did I write how long I have to cut it? No, darn it. 
Okay, now I have to measure it. Hold on. I tried to make sure and write all my measurements down. <laughs> so this is this particular project. There's a lot of measurements. It's a lot of things to remember. So it looks like I cut it at about 26 inches. The pattern will tell you what to cut it at. I'm going to do that in half. So I'm going to do 13. Okay, so that's just some extra elastic that I had downstairs. This is the one that I recommend. So I'm going to go ahead and take this piece of elastic. So the elastic, we're going to make it fit. It is much, much smaller, as you can see, than the piece we're going to uh, put it to. Is that the way that worked? Let me make sure. Hold on. Yeah. I think my elastic or my ribbon's going to be upside down, even though I tried to check. Okay, so the, what what I want to do is I want to pin the elastic on so that it matches up to the end where I pinned it. Okay, so that pin was here. I stick it. I use the pin to reattach the elastic right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch across here, and I'm going to stitch this with a smaller zigzag a couple of times to secure it really well because I want that to stay. That's where it's going to get pulled the most as it's, you know, stuck in this thing. So if that isn't secure, your elastic is just going to come off. Excuse me. Come in here. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change this to this. So I'm going to put it at too long and too wide. All right. I'm just going to stitch across this end. So it's a pretty small little zigzag and I'm gonna actually do this a few times because I want it to really, really hold and not come loose at all because that's where it's gonna get all the pressure is right there. Okay, so you can come on over here. So now I've got this end held. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark my elastic. So I need the elastic to feed in to this whole length. So I need the elastic to stretch to here, but I need to make sure that I'm stretching it evenly. So I can do this, but how do I stretch? For, like when I'm sewing, how do I do this? So I'm going to mark it is what I'm gonna do. So here is my half. And here is my other half, some quarters. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one and measure my quarter there. All right, so now my elastic is marked the same as my towel. So this one will go here, this one will go here, and this one. What happened to my other pin? <laughs> we'll go here. Just don't find it with your feet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one will end up over here. So we're going to sew this on. As you can see, it's a little bit away from the edge. So I didn't put it right up to the edge. I put it in just a little bit because we're going to actually stitch on this little edge. All right. So we want to keep it in just a little. And then as we sew, we're going to stretch these. So I'm just going to worry about stretching it to here. And then this will pull up. And then I'll worry about stretching it to here and let it pull up. Okay, when I get here, I need to make sure that this stays out of the way as I stitch it down. All right, so let's do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, hmm. this is the uh, the fun part. This is where I need like six hands. I need a small child to come. Will you hold that for me? Is that what they're for? <laughs> yeah, that's what I've used mine for. Could you We're hold that? Selling assistance. <laughs> Check. <laughs> So I'm going to use a little bit bigger stitch. So I'm going to use a 3.5 right now because I want it to, well, no, I'm going to do a three because I want it to kind of feed in a little bit faster. I'm stuck with that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this so it matches. I'm gonna pin. Okay. So now these two can hold together a little bit better. I can let it go when I start up at the beginning here. I'm going to do a nice secure stitch. And now that's secure, I can hold this, pull it, and let it feed toward that. I'm using on my on my machine here. Let me see if I can get the light to. Oops, I don't know what I just threw on the ground over there. Let's see if I can get the light to come in here so you guys can see the. I can't see the markings on the foot. There's a mark here that's a half or a three eighths inch, and there's a mark here that's three eighths inch. So mine is sort of just fitting right in between there. So those are the lines that I'm going to keep my eyes on. Okay, is to make sure that my elastic is still has an edge and that it's basically feeding in the center of those. 
and I'm just going to keep it stretched kind of wide open is what I want to say until we get to that point. Move that over just the tiniest bit. Okay, I'm going to get it to that point. I'm going to stop it before I hit that pin. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. So then I'm going to pull this, put my pin in here, and sew to the next spot. All right. So it's really not difficult as long as you do it in these little hunks. The larger one, these sections are twice as big. So there's a little bit longer to sew in between them. So if those feel too big, you can always just do more divisions. So instead of doing quarters, do eighths. Just keep dividing it up and getting it so that it is um, doable for you. All right, get that pin out. Keep going. Somebody posted a link to the American Girl doll. That looks uh, like me? That, yeah, it's uh, Kristen Larson, yes. apparently. <laughs> I thought there'd have to be one with braids. I mean, looks like me is you know, relative. Thanks, Janice. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna pull this real good. Get this nice and straight. Okay, now here comes my stiletto. I'm gonna stab it through here, pull it. Keep that elastic nice and taut. Okay. So then, go back over here and stitch this down with my zigzag that I did before. There we go. So then I'll stitch this end in place now that I have it exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to stitch it back and forth. Because again, this is where all of the tension is going to be on those ends, okay? So we are sort of spreading it out by doing the elastic throughout. So you can see how that brings it, brings it in, okay? Super cute. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fold it. I was like, I have to find my blue marks again. Now we have to fold it on the blue marks, which is basically you fold the three, three inches over. For me, measuring this and then trying to measure up the right amount while I'm ho also holding this straight is too many things. I end up having to use an elbow and stay. You know, like. <laughs> that's why you marked it before we added the elastic. Exactly. So Got that's it. why I marked it a little bit early so that I could just have it in place rather than trying to do any sort of gymnastics to get it in the right position. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this direction. So I'm going to flip this around because I want to be able to pin so that I can take the pins out as I'm sewing. So that's why I want to pin this direction on this. All right, here's another little blue line. I'm going to fold that over. Stretch that out. I still need like an extra four hands, but <laughs> we'll get it figured out. It doesn't, it isn't <laughs> actually too terrible because even though you can't get that perfectly straight, once you start sewing, you're actually going to pull this straight and it will sew along there pretty okay. Okay, there's a little mark. So you could also technically, oh, dang it. Um, <laughs> you could technically uh, draw a line across the whole thing. I just didn't want to. Sorry, I lost my first pin. Did you see that? That's what happened. The first one. Boof. <laughs> Gone. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pin over my little ribbon too. So that'll sort of stay in place a little bit. My ribbon wanted to move. It doesn't make me happy. So you see, you can see, like, I have to struggle with it a little bit if you're trying to measure this, too. Let me just say, the first time I did it wasn't the easiest. I want to make sure that that end matches, too. Sorry, I'm trying to be, I'm, like, not even trying. I am being picky right now. Which usually I'm like, it's fine, be close enough. But now I'm like, I just need it perfect. Okay, <laughs> sometimes it happens. All right, so now I do the same thing here. Hold that. Hold that. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-person job for sure. If you've got a grandkid around, a young one, it can help you. Even if you have, you know, a partner, 
has been to something, make them come hold stuff for you. <laughs> Best friend, whatever you need. Okay, so now we're gonna just stitch this down all the way across. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot to do the hemming the side. Dang it, I just realized that. Hold on, I have to think really quick. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna stitch down to these pins. Sorry guys, I messed up one spot. Order of operations. Order of operations, yeah. What did I say on there? Mark with pin, da 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 da. Yeah, no, no. Oh, hem left edge, right up at the very top of my list of things I needed to do. Hem left edge. Did, did I do not that? Do. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we're gonna go back to a straight stitch at 3.0. Do a little back stitch. And I'm just going to bring this in and I'm just stitching down the very edge of the, the selvage. So what I'm trying to do is uh, be able to catch that without catching the elastic at all. All right. So the other trick is doing it and not catching yourself on pins at all, which I will tell you is definitely not always the easiest. Okay. So then I can get this a little tug. And I'm just going to keep trying to ease that, make sure it works. I'm like, do you want to poke down that little part right there with the stiletto? Like, <laughs> I know that you can't. It's okay. We're I just going to have a little maybe? blip right there. <laughs> I could just like see it building. There's nothing I could do. I'm like, oh, my hands are being used. Because I really have to pull both sides. You don't want to just pull it out the front. Like you have to keep some tension back here because otherwise all of the stretch that you're doing, all of that weight is going on your needle. Like all of that pressure, I guess, uh, not weight, but pressure is going to be on your needle pulling it backward. So you really want to be able to use this hand to keep the tension to keep it straight as it's coming through. Okay, almost to the stopping place. Okay, so now if we were smart, I would have done this before. Okay, so when you do this, make sure that you do this part first. Why did that not cut? Okay, so what I have to do is hem this edge here. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this in, fold this in, do a little pin. So the other two edges are going to be bound, but this edge is going to be hemmed. So this is what I did with this edge. So this works really nicely. So this is the big size, the full size one. Okay. And I just took it to my serger and I surged that edge and then I folded it over and stitched it down. So it's a nice finished edge here because of the serger. All right. Whereas with the one I'm doing now, I didn't use the serger to finish this edge, and so I have to fold it twice. Because if I don't fold it twice, all of this, you can see, it will continue to fray. Because it's not in it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just pin that in position. You can see I'm not really carefully measuring at all. It's about a half an inch. Terry is a little bit like cuddle that you're like, yeah, it's close. It's soft, it's gonna get weird. Okay, all right. Not terrible, I think we're able to salvage it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go back, we'll sew this little side seam. Not or the worst hand. order of operations Not the worst, I didn't have to take anything out, so that was helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch this down. So this is where it's a little bit funky because it has to go past the part that will be stitched over. Come on. There we go. All right. Let's round that little corner is a little bit funky, but not too bad. And we're just going to stitch this down. Like I said, the easiest way is to do it with the serger. But if you don't have a serger, because not everyone does, this is absolutely suitable. 
The biggest part will be when we have to fold over that top edge, we just have a really big thickness at the top. This is one of those places that uh, you can actually use your hammer. Your hammer? Your hammer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know True what you story. mean. <laughs> True story. So here, when we're going to flip these over, these are these two are really, really thick right here. So thankfully, the selvage here is like thinner, so we can sew over the selvage in here. But this is really thick. So if your machine is having a lot of trouble sewing it, literally just hit it with a hammer, and it breaks down the fibers and makes them smash together more. So you do that with denim a lot, and canvas and stuff. Got so it. you can do that with lots of layers. But this would be one that I might want to like. Oh. If I were going through all those layers, my machine were struggling. I'm doing just a tiny part, so I'm going to hope for the best. Okay, that seems right enough. Okay, so we're going to come back in here, stick that in. So this is what you'd be doing. You just sew along that whole edge, and you're going to continue right here all the way to the very end. I like that I tried to prep myself by writing out the steps and then totally still forgot one. <laughs> I try. This is a lot. And all of these steps are really um, written out really, really well on the Sofa homepage. So she does a good job of being very explicit about each step uh, and very, uh, yeah, just very clear about it. So there's a lot, it looks like there's a lot, a lot of steps if you, if you check out her pattern. It looks like, oh my gosh, it's really big. But it's actually not terrible because she just tells you every little bit you need to do. So now I'm here and I've got my elastic. It's going to come in. But what I want to do is create a little edge here so that I get that cute little kind of ruffle. I don't know what that's called. I think across the top there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch on the other side of my elastic. So for me, it looks like I have about a half an inch up top there because I have... A weird size. I think on half yours. Half an inch or a quarter inch? I think it's about a half an inch. Okay. Let's see. So I can feel. Because oh. here's where oh, I need I to see. stitch about there. Got it. So I think that if I put this in my machine and I measured, yeah, the edge of my foot here is about a half an inch. So I'm going to actually let it run about here so that I can make sure and not catch any of my edge. So at about three eighths of an inch is what I'm actually going to do. Okay, and I'm going to start here. So this is one of those areas where we're now stitching over. I'm going to move that pin that just dropped on the floor. That looks dangerous. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hand crank this in. And do a little shove. Oh wait, I have a hump jumper. Remember we bought we Gina we Majig. Bought a Gina Majig. So this is the cute little tool uh, I'm gonna come around that we, the back. Used, <laughs> that we used last week in our book and it works so well I just realized oh, it might work with this too so it's this part here and it gives a little bit of uh, substance you can see how thick the terry is that the foot still can't sit flat okay so I'm gonna lock the stitch if it'll let me oh. no nope. hold on oh <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So now I just locked my stitch. So you could do like a tiny little uh, back stitch there. But now I'm just going to see if I can go forward. I'm going to use my stiletto just like I did before and that little Gina Majig. See if I can get it start feeding through. Okay. That might be my new favorite tool. All right. So now I'm just going to give it a tug as it works itself through. I'm going to give it a little pull. There's times that that. <laughs> This little walking foot, <laughs> digital dual feed gets in the way. This would be one of those when we're, I need something to grab. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple of pins just to keep the fabric flat as I'm pulling it through because I can feel it wants to kind of roll toward the front. So I'm going to okay. put a couple we're pins come in. Back around again. All right. And then I'm just going to bring this through. So I'm pulling the front and the back again and adding this little channel. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this nice and straight. So I've got my, my foot and my needle down, holding it in position so that I could stretch it real good. Kind of do a little pin here and make sure that it stays nice and even. 
and then I'm gonna do the same thing, feed it through. If you can feel it catching your elastic, you'll need to stop and take some stitches out because if you catch your elastic, it'll stop the stretch from coming back there, which will make your, which, you know, may happen today, we'll see, but it'll make your elastic pucker weird. Okay. Oh. Pulled it and got off. All right. So I'm just gonna go down the rest of the way. Keep this nice and straight. And that little blue mark that I have there will come off with the wash or just a little spritz of water too. Okay. So now I've got the top done. So here's my cute little, my little hook. <laughs> it's just so tiny. So this is the side that will go underneath. So this is the left side. If I were to put it on, okay, wraps around the body, overlaps here. So at this point, I can do the binding. I want to make sure. So down. Binding okay. your Velcro or binding your hook and loop. Yep, binding is what is next on my list. So now I'm going to bind these edges. So. We're going to switch back our needles <laughs> and hopefully not fall down. Okay. <laughs> you all right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> got, it got tight back here. Yes, it did. There's a little stool. Okay. I'm going to put my pins back because I'm going to go ahead and do the cuddle binding. So this is really done just the same as we would otherwise. We're just going to use a cuddle three today. So if you wanted to, you could absolutely use a um, you could absolutely use a Lux for this. I used a Cuddle 3 partly because the other one uses cotton. I don't know quite what happened there. Uh, <laughs> it's very uh, Mystery odd. not cut. <laughs> um, but weirdly sort of cut. Um, yeah, bizarre. Uh, so we're to sew these together, but I always wanted, I want to show you how to do it with the Cuddle 3 versus the Lux Cuddle. We have a really good video on how to do binding when you're doing it with Lux Cuddle. And I really prefer Lux Cuddle for all of the quilts. But on this one, it actually is really cute with the Cuddle 3 and it's nice and flat, so it works well. In the pattern at Sew for Home, she uh, has you use cotton, which is totally useful too. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. Because that one doesn't have the cute little cutting line. I don't, I don't know what happened. I didn't press hard at one point. Right, that was really weird. Huh. <laughs> All right, so I am, I have two pieces cut here because that's what I needed for the big one. But let's see what I need for this little guy. I think I might be able to get away with one piece. Yep. So I'll be able to bind this whole thing with just the one piece of elastic or uh, cuddle. So we're going to do that. If I had to bind the pieces, I'm going to show you if I had to combine them so that I needed a longer stretch of fabric. I would want to make sure that my nap is going in the same direction for both. So I'm going to pet it, make sure that they are the same. So I double check that by holding it and then sort of doing a little pet on both sides. I'm like, okay, it's the same. If I do it the other direction, they'll both be the same as well. Okay, so now I know they're going the same way. Once I have it set up here, then I flip it over. Let's get that out of the way, less confusing. Okay, so here, same direction. Then I'm going to flip it over and I would stitch from this corner to this corner and have it become a long bias. Well, not a bias strip, but a long strip. Okay. So I'm just going to use the one, but that's how you would do it if you had to connect two of them together. So I'm going to start up at the top here. And then I ha had to think about it. If I want the binding to... I prefer to finish mine on the front. So which means I had to sew it to the back and bring it around to the front. So it took me a second to figure out which way I was, which side I was supposed to sew it onto, but I wanna sew it to the back and then bring it around. So I'm actually figuring that out. I am gonna have to start over here because this is where I can start on the back. I also like to bring it so, if I remember what I did here. Yep, is that I bring it so that the, the nap goes toward, okay? toward the edge that I'm finishing. So that means my nap goes this way. 
So this is where I want to sew it on the back. So when I sew it to the back, I get sewn on and brought around. And then I can sort of be like, oh yeah, that's how I want it. You can absolutely do it the other way. Or you would sew it on here, bring it around, and then you have this edge. It's totally fine. Either one of them works. Just be, you know, somewhat consistent in what you do. That's all. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. <laughs> And I'm going to pin this on here, and then I'm just going to clip it a little bit. How much did you leave sticking out of the top up here? I don't know, about an inch or so. What we'll do after I get this stitched on, then we'll pull this around real tight and finish up that end. I don't want to start that way because it's just, it's harder for me. It's more things for me to manage. So I'll fix that end when we get there, but this is just a little extra that we'll pull some of it around. Okay. Got it. So yeah, that's just, um, that's to be taken care of later. So let me get a couple of little wonder clips. I'm just going to clip these along this edge. This doesn't have to be perfect. Did we ever change the needle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nope. Jackie was reminding you too, and I was going to remind you. Oh, good. I just thought about it. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. She's always got my back. So then, like I said before, the reason we switched to a stretch needle is because it sews better on the cuddle, and that's important. Okay, so I'm just gonna using the clips because they need to just basically hold in place and they'll hold in place pretty well with that. Okay, so I'm gonna take my needle out. So see if we can, see if you can, oops, hold on, let me turn it over. So there is one marking and here's the other. See if you can see the colors on it. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Maybe really? Get, maybe get out of the shop there? I don't know. There. That's as about as good as I can get. Okay. With the so focus. I can see, so there is, um, I can see the yellow strip and the blue strip, and I see an orange strip here. And those are all referenced in, back to the little lesson we had at the beginning, this little chart right here. Okay. Yeah. So it's a universal 8012 is what the, the one is. Okay. And then the other is a stretch. 9014. Got it. Okay, so, so that's how you can tell which your needles and are. Nothing in orange. Right, exactly. And a lot of needles, they only have the little measurement written down on there somewhere. And I think past the age of about eight, you can't read that small. So this this actually works really, really well. And uh, Rhonda, who works at Schmetz, is the one who came up with that idea, she told me. She's the one that got them to color code the sizes and type, which I think is a fabulous idea. It's so much easier. Okay, so I've got the needle changed. Got my thread. How are we doing on bobbin? Doing okay? Did you just get to use your your uh, recently fixed threader? I did. Or your lovely. auto threader? That was pretty awesome. Yeah, the threader is great. <laughs> <laughs> How did I live without it for like eight months? By squinting Oof. a lot. It's true. <laughs> That is very true. <laughs> there are definitely some Sew Together Tuesdays where we spent a good minute watching me thread a needle. Not my favorite. So I'm sewing this down. I do it at a, a, around 3 eighths, a little bit more, like mostly because I'd rather be shy of a half an inch. Because then if you can see, if you come, come straight in the front here, you can see like where my, my fabric is actually ending past this red mark, which is the 3 eighths. Um, half is at the end of this line here. So I do it a little bit shy of a half. I aim for three eighths and it always goes over. So that might be, if you're having trouble with getting your bindings to be the right width, that might work for you too. Is aim, you know, aim a little shy of where you should be and then it might end up right. Okay. We're just gonna work this along. And uh, you'll notice that the faster I go, the more the fabric will sort of bunch up a little bit on me. So I'm like, all right, slow down. Slower is always a little better. So if I get a little bit that bunches up like this when I'm doing binding, I just make a spring. What's going on I don't, there? I don't really know. That was fun, though. Um, <laughs> spring. It's just like, yeah, it was a little spring. So I just, uh, yeah, 
take it off, keep going. It's such a little amount that it's going to be uh, built up that I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't panic about it. And I'm not trying to make anything match. I'm just trying to get it to fit that edge. So this is a fine way of doing it. Okay, so then when I get up here, I need to stop about a half an inch from the end. I really need to stop a half an inch from the end. So I'm going to put a pin right there. And I know that's where I need to stop. So I'm going to come up here and give it a little stitch. Okay, and I'm going to lift my foot. I'm going to turn this guy so that I'm coming straight off the end, off the corner right here. And so on my machine, it has a well-worn little line here that is my center. So I can actually turn this to the point that I can see that that's coming right down the center. And then I can start sewing there. All right, so use those little markings on your machine if you have them. They're very helpful. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut my thread. And take this out. So now you can see the little line that I've got here. This line is gonna help me get a really nice miter. So what I do is I bring it up, so it goes straight up the edge, and then I'm gonna bring it back down. Okay, and I just kind of hold it in place. I'm gonna get this pin, and I'm gonna stick my pin in there. Okay, so now it's held in place where I want it to be. This is how I can get a nice miter on this, because I've got the little line under here, and that's how it's folding really nicely at a 45. Okay, and then I've got this held in place so this isn't going to move. This is the thing that found, I found really, really helpful was pinning this in place. Because then I can go ahead and I can flip over here. I'm going to turn this, get this underneath. And I'm not still trying to hold everything exactly where it's supposed to be, which is truthfully just too much work. To, it's one of those where you need, you know, a lot more hands than you have. All right, so once I get that going, then I can move my clips and add a few more clips down the side here, work my way up to the waistline. All right. Are we doing okay out there otherwise? Everybody seems pretty, pretty happy. Good. It took, I took everybody a little bit of time to figure out what was going on with the measurements because we're doing a half size version. Yes. Um, but uh, so. I think we're all on the same page. Okay, good. Sizes yeah. are different for what I'm doing. Follow the measurements that are on the blog. Yeah. Because really, this would be a three-hour project if we were doing it. <laughs> right. Full size. <laughs> Full right. size. And, and now, actually, there's, a, there's been a request for an additional hair towel for the set. Oh, so, which that's seems a great to, idea. like a, an oversight, yeah. generally oh, speaking. Th there are a bunch more things that you could add to it. Like, honestly, when I found um, a bath bomb that my daughter bought me, and I was like, oh, I could add that to the whole set, too. So I just made myself a Mother's Day gift, I think, which is great. I did make the slippers my size, just in case they worked. Everybody else got slippers last time we did them, so. <laughs> you got sparkly slides now? I have sparkly slides. Oh, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> All right, so then we go ahead and just finish up there. Oops, I'm gonna clip that. And I'll take that up. All right, so now we've stitched all the way around. This is indeed on the inside, which is good. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and clip a tail off the end here. So this is the part that you can figure out, <clears throat> excuse me, how picky you want to be about how this finishes. So I'm not going to leave a lot here. I'm just going to kind of pull it, and then I'm going to trim some off. And then I'm going to stitch it down again. Okay, so I'm actually going to cut here. So I, maybe, maybe that's an inch, three quarters of an inch. What do you think? Yeah, let's call it an inch. Okay, it's about an inch. Hold it real nice and tight. I'm going to tuck that in. So I'm going to go back over and I'm going to stitch this down again so it's secured. All right, and I'm pulling it nice and hard so that I can um, get it to kind of stretch over there and pull that nice and flat. This is the part that if you're not, if you're not careful with it, you end up with a, like a ridge right here. So you can see how this like pops up right here and that's really easy to do. So what you wanna do is make sure that when you're folding this over, you're really like pulling it back so it gets a little bit short right there and then when it pops over, it'll be even. Trust me. I say that, I, and I'm like, I, I hope it works. I can't wait to see it works what last that time. does. Okay, so I'm just pulling it a little bit extra tight, 
and I'm going to stitch it down again. So we're going to stitch both yeah. those ends real quick. Does the terry come in colors? The terry comes in a couple of basic colors. There's like a gray. I'm not sure if we have the blue anymore. I should have checked all that this morning. I don't remember. Uh, I know we have white in all of them. And we may have some other colors. So we do Ellen this one says over here. it comes in charcoal. Yay, thank you. Okay, that's the gray color that I meant. All right, let's do this side too. Thank you, Ellen. But it is 100% cotton, so it is totally dyeable. So you can make this whatever you wanted it to be. The white is nice, but honestly, yeah, if you have the capability of dyeing it, you could do all sorts of fun, fun colors. So, all right. Cindy, I see your comment, and I agree. You need the stiletto, and I don't know how I ever got by with it out, without it. It's so good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, and I've got this now. It kind of comes across the end. Comes across the end, so you can see how this is nice and smooth right there. Okay, so it's not such a big hiccup. If you're not careful, you'll get a big hiccup right here. Got it. All right, so then I'm going to actually trim off the corner. This is where I get a little nitpicky. I told you every once in a while I do. This is where I need to be nitpicky, so I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this over. And I cut that off right there so that I have a little bit less in there. Let me see if I can do it this way. We'll have even less. Because then it's less bulk and less popping out the top. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and stick a pin in it because I want this to not move. So really that's, we've talked about it before, like that's when I use pins is when I want things to not move. <laughs> and that's what I want over here too. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good tug, pull that over, and then yank this over because this needs to just pass that part that we did below. All right, the, so the first line of stitching because this is on the front. So we need it to make sure that it looks pretty darn good. Okay, so we got that pin in place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually, so that's the hardest part. There's a lot of tugging with that part because it's so thick and you're trying to get all of that over it. If you're having a really hard time, you could trim down your terry cloth too. But I'm also going to put a pin in here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because when I get around to here, I want this to match. And if it's not matching by the time I get to here, I have this little bit of time to really kind of feed it in and make sure that it's even by the time I get here so that my corner is still going to be nice. All right. So there's not a lot of times that we're really picky with binding, but this is the one that I'm going to be a little picky with it. Okay. You can see how the fabric wants to curl and it wants to just kind of come right over here. So I make sure that my terry cloth is tucked under. I'm going to go ahead and clip this every little bit. And I'm going to take this nice and slow. I might even slow down my machine <laughs> so I can get this to stitch nicely. So it, right here, I can feel when I pull this over, I can feel it once it curls over because there's too much. So you know what I do? I just come in here and then just clip it out. You can do that with any binding. If you feel like the inside is just too thick, just take it out. Okay, because it's all gonna get it's all gonna get covered anyway. There's one of my cute little ones. What is, what is that? <laughs> so you know there's like the big jumbo clips, and this is the little mini one that's really good for paper piecing. And I have a whole bunch oh, of them, but that's the only cute. one that's in this <laughs> this box of, of wonder clips. So like a wonder clip sharp. Yeah, exactly. It's good for holding, yeah, narrow things or, um, yeah, like sort of pointy areas. Okay. So this same way, I'm going to come down this side and kind of give it a tug, make sure it comes over. And then we'll go around this whole thing, stitch it. I think we might be okay time-wise. It's great. I was like, we could be here for hours, but we're not. Hey. So this would be a fun one too if we remember we did the uh, the robe last year at some point too. You could totally make a robe that match. You could make a robe out of the Lux Cuddle that match this. 
Uh -huh. I'm telling you, give your mama some love or yourself because, you know, if you're a mom, you definitely deserve it. All right. So now I've got my stuff all pinned, ready to go. I've got the right needle in. I'm actually going to change my bobbin just in case because I'm kind of getting low. And the last thing I want to do is go around this thing and have to change my bobbin in the middle of the binding. Hate that. Did you just not play bobbin chicken? I, I will I will play bobbin chicken later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I like playing bobbin chicken impressed. on bindings. Bindings really like I don't want to have to stop. That makes me nuts. So what is that? Oh, there we go. Okay, got it. All right, so then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna change my stitch because I'm gonna put this on a serpentine. So normally when we do top stitching, I do the big zigzag. And if you've ever watched me do the bindings, that's what I love is the big zigzag. And um, I do love it, but I love it on Lux Cuddle. So what I have found is that on the Cuddle three, because it shows all the stitches, it's actually a really good time to do a decorative stitch and the serpentine, um, show the stitch. The serpentine is this S thing, okay? You can see this is what it looks like when I push the button. It tells me it's gonna look like this, but I'm actually gonna make it look like this. So on yours, it may look more like this. It may look like a little S. Uh, they often don't look exactly how they stitch. All right, so I want to do it so that my stitch is gonna go mostly on my Cuddle three. And just barely come off here so i'm going to put my my material in the machine that same way that most of it is over here all right i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to start up at the tippy top and i'm going to do a little lock stitch and you, your bobbin thread, thread and your regular thread are both white they are both white yes and they are both polyester yes they are both the same metler uh, thread. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to let this start working itself through. And this might have been a good place for the hump jumper. See? And I'd like use it all the time now. Maybe my, my new stiletto. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. It's so good for the thick parts. So, hey. So now I've got that beginning part started and I'm just going to keep going nice and slow and i'm just going to hold this over with my with my stiletto to where i want it to be and take it nice and slow here okay and i can sort i don't know if you guys can see i can sort of see the line that i stitched it at it's really hard to see it it's kind of more like a little bump in there so i'm really kind of just eyeballing it and seeing what happens Okay, I'm just doing a little bit at a time. So like I said, it's it's nice and slow. I want it to come right to the edge and then head back in. If I go too fast, what happens is those S curves end up being really, really um, not consistent. Like they're just like, there'll be like a little short one and then a long one and then a short. Like you want to make sure that you're being as consistent as possible. Okay. Oh, I know what I need, my reading glasses. Okay, I'm also going to take my wonder clip out, pull this over again, and get our way down here. So the last time we did this, we did a little experiment. Do you remember with the uh, So Sweet blanket, the embrace one with the corners? And we, uh, we tried a couple of different ways of stitching them because I tend to have a hard time catching the end, the corner. I can't get the corner to be nice every time. For some reason with this, I generally can. And I don't know what the difference is. So I'll show you the way I do it here and we'll see, see how it works today. I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm really good at doing something and then I try it and it totally doesn't work, so. Or we'll you see. basically realize you got lucky the first four times? Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, all right, that's a new skill set to build. So you can see I don't go very far at a time. It's just a little bit. I'm trying to keep it nice and even. Uh, there are lots of ways that people do their bindings that are probably faster than mine. But I do do it nice and slow. Okay, so I'm gonna tuck this under there. 
And we didn't talk about this, but the binding, you want to make sure especially uh, that you are not pulling that when you are sewing it or when you are trying to get off the cuddle dust. Because what happens, so this is where I need to like pin it and pin it and pin it. But when you pull it, what happens is you stretch the knit and you will end up with a curl here on this edge will curl really bad. And that's super frustrating. So make sure you're not pulling it. The other thing that happens if you pull your binding while you're sewing it, you will, uh, I should have pinned this before I stuck it in the machine. You'll end up bowling your, whatever you're binding. I wasn't gonna say your quilt, but you'll end up bowling it so that it will end up kind of puckering over and it's terrible. So make sure to be really careful. So I took the pin out. I'm just gonna hold this in place really well. And keep my stiletto out of the way. The the difference between out of the way and in the way in this circumstance is very, very it's small. Very your, small. Your stiletto is basically right there next to the needle. It is. And I can feel the needle coming down in the fabric <laughs> through the stiletto. And with the serpentine stitch, it's not hitting the same place twice in a row. No. So, so it's, you know, it's a little game. Yeah. So maybe use your thinnest pins there. I don't know. It is definitely, uh, yeah, it's careful sewing. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep coming down this whole side. So you can see here, this is the way that it's turned out. So far, so good. Okay, this top part here, I have a little bit of a, kind of a little bit of a flap thing, which I might take over and like, just do a couple of little zigzag stitches right here to hold that down. Okay, to make sure that that doesn't stick up. In the pattern, they use cotton, and so she does a like a stitch down across the very end of it. I wouldn't do that with the cuddle because the cuddle is already so thick that to get it to go across the end enough to stitch it, you'd end up like a real, an actual flap. Let's get that little. That was that was very obvious, like how it's made. See all those little loops. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. So that's like a row of the Terry loops that are there. So that's why when we cut it, you get all of those little loops get cut. And then it's kind of messy. It doesn't float though, it just like falls off. All right, any other questions we've gotten there? So far so good. Okay, good. I'm just gonna keep going. Keep sewing. Okay. Just do it a little bit at a time, make sure I'm catching it as well as I can. And then the hope is that on the back, it's fairly even with the seam line. So that most of the stitches will be on the back the same that they are on the front. I actually don't think I've ever seen you take this much time and care on a binding before. So <laughs> note everybody that this is extra slow. It is, the, the, it is the, extra slow. The sewist with the lead foot is being very chill right now. <laughs> yeah, well, because like what I have found is because when I, when I want to go fast, this just piles up or it just gets stuck and will end up doing like teeny tiny little S's. And I'm like, okay, that's not pretty. I hate this. So honestly, it's partly why I like to do the Lux with the zigzag is because then I can sew faster. Um, but this, if I take my time, it turns out really nice. I mean, my mom taught me that. So I guess that's appropriate. You know, take your time. But I don't want to. I'm in a hurry. And I could just use this little stiletto to just move things around. It's super great. And again, one of my favorites. All right. If you move the camera up, show them where you can adjust the speed for the machine. See this little guy? So lots of machines come this way. Okay, so I'm gonna change this over here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you, is, is that on the medium one? It yeah, is. that's as fast as I can go. And then if I turn it to the slowest one, you'll see that is as fast as I can go. That is pushing pedal that, to the metal. Pedal to the metal. So if you are working with, <laughs> 
a child or somebody who's having, uh, who's just learning how to sew, and especially if they have a hard time controlling their speed, it's a great way of doing it. I have it back on the medium speed, uh, but it does control how fast you can go. So some people definitely have a hard time not just pushing down all the way. I bet they don't sew barefoot either. I remember when you were showing me some stuff uh, and uh, learning how to use the stiletto, I kept forgetting to get the stiletto out of the way. Uh -huh. That was part, and going slower allowed me to think about that more. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's not a race. We're not trying to get through it as absolutely fast as possible. And yeah, going slow will definitely, definitely helps. It lets you be more accurate. It makes you take more care. Yeah. Almost there. Make sure that that's curled over so you can see we ended up being just fine with our end. So we're coming back in around here. This is where we wanted it to be nice and flat still. That is working out. So that's great. Okay, I'm going to take it nice and slow because my pin is here. I do not want to have all that stuff close to my foot. I also do not <laughs> want this to move. So I'm leaving my pin in there a little bit longer. So I took it like half out. Okay. So I can feel like this is where the lever leverage is. The pin is ending around there. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out now. And I'm going to stab it really hard with my stiletto. Okay. Get it in here. okay, it's as close as I want to get to the needle. And then I'm going to do a little lock stitch. And then I'm going to cut the thread. All right. It's <laughs> totally <laughs> stuck underneath the foot. So the same thing here. I have a little bit of a flap so I could hand stitch or I can just take this under the machine. I'll show you really quick what I mean. Because it is... So from this side, I can see it a little bit better. Yeah, we'll do it from this side. So this is the side that's going to be seen. So I'm actually just going to do a straight stitch. So because Cuddle is so forgiving, like honestly, you can just fix goofs right then and there. Where is the little hump jumbo thing? There it is. I'm telling you, it's going to be my new favorite. It's so good. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do a few stitches just to secure it. And then I'll stitch backward. And cut my thread. Okay, so that's going to secure that end. If I trim these threads down, let me get all of that trimmed off. My stitches will hold there. I can go ahead and fluff this just a little. And all of a sudden you can't really see that I did any straight stitches across the end to fix that. Okay? So use that to your advantage. Use the, uh, I don't know, the joy of cuddle being fluffy. Okay? Here we go. Look, at it's, it's getting there, right? Okay, so here is our cute little towel. So now we have to sew on the Velcro. Don't leave yet. Okay, so now we have the cute little Velcro pieces and we're going to put those on. So the Velcro, I'm doing those smaller as well because it's a smaller thing. So normally you do a seven inch piece of Velcro that's going to go across the front. So that's kind of your overlap. That's what I was saying. If you do it like 14 inches larger, that's what that sort of is. Then your hip measurements, if you're like me and your hips are bigger. Uh, so your biggest part or your bust measurement, you can do that too. So I'm going to measure this at three and a half. I'm just going to do three because it's easy. When you cut the fabric for the binding, did you cut with the, the grain widthwise or lengthwise? Widthwise, always widthwise. One and three quarter inches, always widthwise. Yep. And that's so that you will have the stretch. So let me show you again. the. Um, so this is the, the piece after I've cut it. Okay. You can see that it wants to curl just a little bit here. All right. What... What we want to do a lot of times, like it's a kind of our natural inclination, is to grab it and pull off all of the cuddle dust. And if I do that, that's what it does to it. Uh, 
which yeah, is it's super frustrating. Super I, frustrating because you I'm can't get aware. it to go back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get this to be what it was before. So don't. I mean, I can try to lay it, but as soon as I start moving it again, it just flips up, which makes it very hard to sew the binding. So don't do this to yourself. Don't don't pull it at all. Okay. The other thing that happens is if you pull it while you're sewing it, it ends up that you have made this actually shorter than this. So it will bowl. So this will kind of pull up. And that totally happens. Mm. And I've seen whole quilts that just sort of come up on all the edges because they've been um, pulled while you were doing the binding. So be careful with that one. All right. So now we need to put the Velcro on. So this is definitely one where I have to like think it through because I need the Velcro to be here and here. So I'm going to pull these apart here and here. All right. I think I would want the grippy side to be here where it's less likely to touch me. Facing out. Facing yeah, out. I so agree. I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to put the other, the softer side here. All right. And then all we're going to do is just pin these in place and sew them down. Okay. There are different kinds of hook and loop tape that have like a sticky back. Do not use those for these. If you want to use something that's going to hold it in place, I would really recommend the Wonder Tape. So that would absolutely work, which is this little stuff here, okay, that has the adhesive backing. So you could put this on and it would hold it in place. I'm just going to use a couple of pins and that seems to work okay, but definitely use your clover pins because it's thick. And now I'm going to do the same thing here. What happens with the sticky on the uh, the other? Oh, it would just loop. totally get all over your needle and then get shoved into your bobbin case and all sorts of gross things. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That sticky is not meant to be sewn on. It is meant to just be. And so it will totally, um, I say like adhere to your needle. And you don't want that. So one thing like we've talked about with the 505 spray that I really like is that it doesn't stick to your needle because some of the stickies do. So I've got this pinned in place. I'm not going to press it hard, but this will work. So now if I lay this out, this is how I want it to be. So I definitely am one. We've talked about it before lots of times. I'm, I have to like try things out and make sure that that works. Okay, yeah, that works. All right, good. Now I'll sew that down. So then I'm just going to sew those along those edges. All right, and I'm just going to sew this in a big square rectangle, whatever it is. Um, I on a straight stitch. Okay, and then I'm going to move it to a three. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to move it over to a little zigzag so I can try to catch the edge. And because it's Terry too, it's fine and that it will um, uh, kind of hide your stitches as long as you're using the same color stitch, okay, the same color thread. So cuddle will hide your hide your stitches no matter what, but the terry needs to be the same color. Right. I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna do a little rotate. So across the ends. So back down the other side. I definitely have to kind of work it through because the Velcro is thick, the terry is thick, kind of nice and slow working it. All right. I'm just trying to catch mostly that little, that hard edge along there. That's what I'm trying to catch so that uh, it doesn't go over the actual loops too much. Or is that the hook part? I'm not sure which part I want. There's two. There's a hook and a loop. The hook is the plastic part, I believe. That's the what I'm The rougher on. part. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one more. So this would be the loop side. This is the nice and soft side. I'm just going to butt it right up to the binding there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a little lock stitch. And then just take it right alongside. I think to go. There we go. This is where I should have switched the needle back. I could hear it like doesn't want to cut through it very well. That's oh. why. It's because it's kind of round at the bottom. Got it. Yes. I hear it popping through mm -hmm. the plastic. 
yep. yeah in a different way than it did before so kind of interesting so obviously it's still working uh, i'm not freaked out about that but i will replace my stretch needle after this because i feel like this probably isn't super good for the needle that velcro or oops hook and loop tape sorry brands you gotta be careful with them. that one's a doozy that's a doozy <laughs> okay all right one more side look at me going fast again <laughs> it's just Yay. a straight line it's just a straight line not a binding it's all good all right i'm gonna cut my threads the one thing to remember too is that when you cut your threads like that they do leave little tails and i'm really bad about going back and trimming those so Make sure that if yours does that, you are going back and trimming them to get them nice and neat. Okay. All right. There we go. We did it. Turn it over. Flip it. Look at that. Where is my American Girl doll when I need it? Perfect. <laughs> well, see, he worked in the, uh, the pet bed, too. Now, what you stuck him in before was the pet bed? I think so. There we go. Teddy has a new robe. Nice. And, and a shipping hazard. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Towel wrap. So let me show you the real size. Okay, guys. So this is what it will turn out when you do it a real size that it will fit a human. All right. That, not just a doll. So these, this big long bit does make it so that you can make it a wider bit here. So that does give you some flexibility. Um, but like I said, you could totally just make this as wide as you want it to be to fit whoever you need it to fit. So you could make it smaller, wider, whatever. What was that? You didn't oh, the, put pocket? the pocket. Oh, on. I didn't sew the pocket on. Can I sew the pocket on tomorrow? I said I'd only go an hour and a half. I'm gonna sew the pocket on tomorrow. It'll make you come back. <laughs> Actually, we're doing slippers tomorrow. You should come back for that. The slippers are super cute. Um, I'm just gonna put. I have to. I have to do the me measurements. Is what I have to do to figure out where the pocket should go. And I don't know what that is off the top of my head. But this is how it would look. Look at how cute is that. Very nice. It's pretty adorable. <laughs> so here it is for reals with a person. Here's a little, little pocket. Okay, totally wear it. Super cute. Have a little pocket that you can. You know, I'm not sure. Put. Credit card, card cell phone, <laughs> ID. For those people who can't leave their cell phone alone, it would come with you. Totally good. Um, so this is the little towel wrap. Super cute. And like I said, it's really flexible. If you wanted to dye your fabric, this would be a like, super fun project to do with a like coordinating cuddle that was really fun. And you could dye it. Tomorrow we'll be back um, at the um, same time, 10 o'clock Pacific. We're going to be back and we're going to make slippers. And I'm really excited about this project. So this is a new pattern that we're doing. You can find all the information about what the pattern is. It's called the Candace slipper pattern. You can find all of that good information on our blog. And that has where you can get the pattern. Um, I got it through a site on Etsy. I think, I think so is who I got it through. It's a great pattern. I've made a few of these now and I really do like them. And we'll talk about using that soft and stable in the soles tomorrow, which makes it actually really cushy, which is super nice and making you know, these coordinate, same color, right? Super cute. It's a great little project. So we're going to talk about these tomorrow and using a little slipper gripper on the back. And uh, yeah, should be good, I think. So join us tomorrow morning. We'll be back at 10 a.m. I need to find out who the winner is and I can't see them on that, oh, hang on. that screen. Can, can you, can you, oh, there. There's... Okay, there it is. So I was like, I don't have the mask. Sorry, the monitor. Let me, let me get over there so I can get my mouse to work. Nope, I can't get the mouse to, to do what I want it okay. to do. Oh, there, she, he put it up there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I was like, nope, not working. Magdalene. So Magdalene S., thank you so much for watching and for sharing. I appreciate it very much. Congratulations. You are this week's winner of a cuddle quilt kit as well as a pack of soft and stable. So you can make a quilt kit and make some slippers. We've used this in a couple of other projects too, the soft and stable, and I really, I really like it too. It's also, like I said, a by Annie product. So we'll be talking more about that tomorrow and how we're going to use it and the slipper gripper and all sorts of fun things and how you can uh, do some fun tricks with um, the slipper pattern. So that'll be exciting. So join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Thank you so much for, join, for joining us today. Don't forget to join the I Love Cuddle group. Subscribe, get notifications, all of that good stuff. And we'll see you next time. Happy sewing.